you know, he's a little rickety, but it's not that he's rickety. He's made from a suspension system. Hello, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. I got a treat for you today. You've seen a lot of videos of RVs, vans, schoolies, and uh, homemade trailers before, but uh, I was biking here in Central Jersey the other day, and I bumped into a woman named Robin who uh, does some really cool stuff, and she built this little enclosure and uh hey robin you are you in there hey, yep. hey patrick hello welcome to new jersey outdoor hey. adventures you? you're gonna give us a tour of your little cabin or fort yeah yeah and thanks again it's really cool meeting you but so yeah um this is my little thing i started out calling it a fort and uh, as i you know got more and more into it i just kind of carried away my one son's like mom you built the cabin you know so i just turned into whatever but you know this front has like this really cool drop down feature awning thing so that the whole place can be completely shut in and you know it's pretty sturdy and heavy so no major big critters can get in and so you can be inside and be like really safe from stuff outside and that each one has like some plastic right now it's normally not always there but for now and then i have used some of my old cast nets fishing you know nets for a screen and it keeps the bigger critters out like in the summer when they have those giant bees and, and stuff and a little washing like hand washing station it's really just a jug of water and like science part is if you melt a little hole down at the bottom hold it fill it up and then put the lid on tight, it won't leak out. Let me drip for a second. There's no water in it right now because it was frozen and leaked out. But when you unloosen this, the, loosen the cap, the water will just squirt out and it'll pour like a little fountain. And then you just start it's usually soap in there and you just get a little hand washing station going. Um, this side, I decided to go horizontal instead of vertical just to see which went faster. It was actually a lot harder to find pieces of wood that stayed together. Uh, I used mostly cable ties for like really some, you know, reliable securing, but some twine, some whatever I could find, no, no nails, anything like that. I want it to be able to like fall down, knock down if it has to, it's nature. We have this really cute window, there's the plastic and the net underneath and it drops down. And then once again, I took some moss and I shoved it in between, you know, the little strips of wood. So it's a really nice blind from the inside as well. I'll actually, I'll leave it open for now. And if you want to see from the outside or inside, um, can you scoot it on this way? In the back, I just kind of have it, you know, camouflage. There is another awning back here, a little bit more rickety. You can see underneath there's two little windows. Um, I usually don't use this one much, it's just stationary. It's kind of, I always gotta do some touch ups. Uh, the roof is on a slant so that the rain kind of rolls back that way. Uh, so far, it's doing pretty good. And this is the pretty side, I like to call it. Um, here I got a lot of moss in the window sills, which I think is just really pretty, but it helps just to keep the net down and I just like the way it looks. And you know, get some dirt around the bottom just to kind of secure it all. Oops. And then out here I have this like a little shelf, you know, you can put your drink on while you work. I kind of think I'd like to do some little projects around here. Use it as like a little studio, you know, art kind of thing. I just just got done finishing it <laughs> so I haven't started to utilize it that way yet each you gate know, comes to the center closes and I'll do you want me to show this one more right here if I can get that this is the big one so that this is your complete closure so you can roll it up open the doors Tear it up and again this one's also very heavy so the wind doesn't go blowing them around and just put a wedge to kind of hold it somewhere 
should stay. Give it a good test. There we go. So you can have these open or closed from the inside. Would you like to come inside? Well, Mr. Rogers kind of. <laughs> so inside I have a really nice L-shaped seating bench. It could really sleep two people comfortably, I think. Um, it's about, I have never measured it, but it's about seven by eight. Kind of comes to a diamond shape at the bottom. Pretty much n n nobody hasn't had any too much trouble with the standing. Pretty short. But, uh, you know, maybe if you're six foot, you might have to hunch a little bit. Um, yeah, I just have an extra center pole here for support. And a little candle hanging out. Um, so here's the one window from the outside that we saw. And that's where it would drop down. I also have some tarping so that at night you can drop that down for also protection and to keep the light from getting outside so you don't get spotted by anybody. Um, I did use in the ceiling here white shower curtain liner just because I wanted it to look brighter. I guess that's a girl thing, but it just made it more like much prettier. It just it reflects the light at night, so it's brighter. I have my disco ball, which I bought about a year before this actually got started with the intent of building a fort, and that's exactly what I bought it for. So I have some candles and a little triangle shelf over here. Um, a bottle of water, some cups, and a little place that if anybody should ever stumble upon it, please sign and say hello and, you know, enjoy it. Just, just leave it as you found it, that kind of thing, or make it better. <laughs> Head to it. Um, but I pretty much use it for just hanging out so far. Uh, these are the two windows that are at the back. And you can drop down this for like a pretty good just like to cut the light out some privacy or then like I said at night when you really want to cut out the light this one would drop down over it also so that would keep the light from getting out there and keeps the warmth in and we have one over here I think this is my favorite window because it's just so tiny and cute with all the moss again like we saw from the outside and this will have like for at night time with darker cloth I ran out of bandanas and then you can pull this string up here and release this and that's the only inside shutter that I have and I actually like this a lot better ideally I'd like to have an inside shutter like this on all of them so and uh, let's see my little light switch here that I bought at the store I thought it was too cute so that you walk in you can instantly have something while you get your candles going um, places to hang things, little vice clips to hold a mirror, and I do have a mirror you flip it on the other side because I've found that you get a lot of stuff in your eyes from falling bark and debris, so very often I do have to come in and do some eye safety stuff. Um, again, more with a fishing net and that, you know, it, it keeps everything out that should, like not the tiny ones, but the big ones. I actually have in here in the summer and it's nice also acts as like a mosquito netting kind of thing. It's a little. There we go. It's, there's a stick in the bottom hem of it so that it makes it supposed to be easy and it drops all the way down to the ground. So it's just really, it's a pretty little, you know, way to keep the bugs out. And you can see the nice breeze. It's a nice effect. So I just roll that up or I can just put it to the side. I'll even leave that down for now because most of the time during the day and during the nice weather and stuff, I would just leave it like that and have a nice breeze going through. These are some random things that I found, some bones and an old coconut, but I really love this. This is a piece of the wood from out yonder in there and it looks like primitive artwork but really this is what the bugs do underneath the bark and the designs on it are just amazing to me it's like almost like a an archaeological treasure and I will be taking this with me wherever I go because it's just amazing and there's not that many that have this much on it that I found around here anyway there's some you know on the, the blinds in here you'll just find them but I, you know, so enjoyed this very much. But I do have 
one more thing maybe that I need to show you. Oh, really? Yeah, it's just like I said, I finished setting this up, but I haven't really done much work here because I got distracted, did some work well, somewhere well, else. Well, let's go check it out. But before we run over there, mm -hmm. what inspired you to build a structure like this? Hmm. Um, as a kid, uh, I spent a lot of time alone and lived next to woods, dead end street. So I was in the woods all the time and watched my dad cutting wood and just build things. Um, and as an adult, I came to some, you know, some time where I was reflecting a lot and what do I want to do? You know, I'm broke pretty much. And so this was something that was free. Like it's like when I was happy when I was a kid, you know, building forts and fishing made me happy and I'm like so I'm kind of broke now so why don't I just do that stuff again and just whatever made you happy when you're a kid you, you can still do it what kind of tools did you use um just really cutting tools which hand saws a machete um and I had an axe that you know that we use the yeah, reverse for like hammers for when I would um post you know putting in posts and stakes but no nails it's all done with uh, twine and most important, the cable ties. They're really, you know, help with give it its good sound structure. Um, but yet can easily be, been, be taken down. You know, I don't want to disturb the real nature of the place. And all the wood is dead wood that was all just laying around, um, you know, from different parts. I spent a lot of time just dragging wood in. I had my piles kind of dwindled, which is good. I have some more there that I saved, like that were pretty pieces. And, you know, just, Eventually, I like to make a little table out here and have a little work area. And this is one of the piles of wood that I have. It would usually be like smaller pieces of wood that I left were left over for cut from cutting. I would have a pile of stakes. And then I would get a little bit longer, which is some longer ones, and then even longer ones that were very nice straight ones that I wanted to save. And these ones are really long. That if I really, you know, when I'm going to do some furniture, maybe type thing, maybe a bench. They'll be really nice, and yet they're not too heavy because they're dead. And this is a little post I have that I can just hang something up, a work basket or my bag, a jacket, you know. This little structure, I call it a powder room. <laughs> Originally, it was just the first thing I built while I um, was building the other one and I would just have a place to hang my bag and have a little, you know, keep invisible a little bit. And I just kept it. It's a, it's a really cool little thing. Now you said there was something else you wanted to show us? Oh yeah. Are you ready? Can we head over wherever it is? Absolutely. I'm really excited to show you. All right, let's head over. So what are your intentions with that structure? A place to hang out, like a little retreat to get out of my house, um, enjoy nature, meditate, get inspired by the nature because nature inspires my kind of artwork. I, I see it and I get ideas and I want to make things from nature. Like, um, like, oh, here I like my T Rex here. Oh my this god, my latest you know, project. I went right from that to this. Uh, this thing is massive. It's pretty big. I, I, I kind of amazed myself a little bit. I had no idea how I was going to do this. I just started and it all rolled into, into it. I can't believe it's right behind your little fort there. <laughs> yeah, he's got his little tiny arms because we know that the T-Rexes have the tiny arms. And you built this the, the same way? The same way. It's all dead wood. I uh, use twine and cable ties, and a little bit of this is called paracord, which is much stronger than a twine. Um, and they do the major suspension parts because he's, you know, he's a little rickety, but it's not that he's rickety. He's made from a suspension system, basically, so that the wind will flex a little bit. He has a post right down here. This is dug into the ground. And so is the one behind it. So that's how the main structure, the first thing that I did was, was to balance this ginormous tail. This is the piece that inspired it really. I saw it and I just saw it. It looked like a vertebrae and tail. And So you, you came up with this whole idea when you were hiking through the woods and found this one tree? Yep. Yes. 
yeah. And, you know, I just see things in the wood, and it's almost like a big puzzle once you decide what you want to do. You hunt, and you, I call it shopping, you go find different pieces of wood that will fit, or you make it fit. And just a, a stone's throw away, this is a totally different type of uh, woods here. It looks like... Uh, I, I All mean, these trees are lined up. It looks like this was plowed out at one point and so on. It's a very interesting area. Grew it. It's almost like it was a grove or of some sort, the way they grow in rows. And uh, once in the, and the thing is, this, if you notice, the tree that I use for suspension here is a very unique tree in this very straight, otherwise forest. This tree grows on a beautiful curve. And I, it just, I loved it from the you know, first time I saw that tree. And it, kind of just, I picked this spot to do the T-Rex without even thinking, so. Well, Robin, thank <laughs> you very much for thank giving us a so tour much. of your fort, and uh, I, this is a treat. I uh, really wasn't expecting to see this. I wasn't expecting so many people and, to find it <laughs> and stuff. This has been a real treasure, like, like just, you know, interesting experience altogether, much more than I ever intended. I just come to, for my own sanity and my own get out here and, fitness and whatnot and imagination whatever you want to call it well you are a true artist i hope you have it have you on the channel in the future well this is patrick with new jersey's outdoor adventures youtube channel hope you enjoyed this video please like this video subscribe share i'd love it we'll see you soon bye <laughs>